problem, whether it's garbage on the road or potholes or traffic, we always blame the government. But these days things are changing. We're taking responsibility, people are making big changes. Yeah, I mean, I see a lot of people taking part in citizens welfare associations and young people going out there and volunteering in organizations, in NGOs. Dude, like Anirudh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. So like Anirudh, this guy we had interviewed once from Let's Be The Change, had started an initiative with a group of students to yeah. actually clean Bangalore instead of just complaining. Yeah. So that's a great initiative that they did and so many people are doing such voluntary work. But another way to fix problems is to go to the very core of it, to the root of it. And that can be done with policy making. Yep. And we're in Delhi today, which I think is the perfect place to talk about this subject. So today we are meeting Gurmehar Kaur, a student activist who has voiced her opinion so much on why Young India should be involved in policy making. She's also co-founded a fellowship program called Citizens for Public Leadership where young people can get involved in policy making. Let's find out more about it from her. Yeah. Gurmehar Kaur is a student at Delhi University, a peace activist and the author of a book titled Small Acts of Freedom. She was named a free speech warrior and next generation leader by the Time magazine. Hey. Okay, okay, so we've already actually, mm -hmm. to be honest, had our hazel eyes. We, we did, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm kind of really excited that I'm here, I'm doing this interview. So tell us, you know, why do you think young people should join public policy? Because you're very vocal about it, you really, you yeah. know, as far as we've seen really, you know, believe in it and say it out loud. Mm -hmm. So tell us, tell us why. I think, I think the biggest, I think one of the most important reasons that young people, especially in India, should be in policy is because we make up almost most of the population. You know, about 65% of the Indian population is under the age of 35. Yeah. When you are 60% of the population, you have the biggest stake. Yeah. And which is why you should be not just, which is why you should be in public policy, which is why you should be in politics, which, should, which is why you should be actively, in, you should be actively engaging with the issues that will directly affect you or indirectly affect your people around you. So I think for me, uh, and I think for me, policy becomes the more tr traditional way out. I think nobody, if we are not, we're not in a space uh, in India, uh, unlike America, where a child will say, when I grow up, I want to be the president. You, here yeah. the idea is you do anything but politics. Mm -hmm. And I think public policy becomes that safe space yeah. where it's more traditional and yet you're engaging with, yeah. uh, with politics and how policy affects people. Yeah. So, so what are the very typical jobs that you can get in public policy? What, what can a so career trajectory be? So uh, the, uh, you can either, you can get into consultancy, which is do we have McKinsey, you have Bain, you have other uh, firms uh, like that. And then of course you can get into the government, yeah. you can work for political parties, you can work for, uh, if not political parties, you can, you can work for political candidates, you can, uh, you can uh, create campaigns. And I think, there's, I think there's a lot to do in public policy. So you strongly believe that uh, public policy and young people getting involved in public policy is very important. And the really cool thing is you've gone on to start an initiative with three of your friends mm -hmm. uh, called you know, Citizens for Public yeah. Leadership. So just tell us a bit about it. Uh, so CPL is this non-partisan fellowship that we've started. We have, uh, we have 22 mentors and we have 22 fellows. All of them are graduates. And uh, we have sessions every other Sunday on uh, every other Sunday at 6 p.m. It's a two-hour session with a Q&A with the with one of the one of the mentors, and the mentors are all high-profile people that you uh, you know that there's so much to learn from. So we have uh, we have Shashi Tharoor, we have Rajiv Sardesai, we had Karuna Nandi take a, se a session on law. Uh, there's no geographical limitation. Yeah. We've used the internet. We we do our sessions through Webex. Uh, which is which is why our fellows are everywhere in the country, and they are getting to learn from the best uh, on a one-on-one. -on -one so it's a one-year fellowship, right? It is a one-year fellowship. We finish our first batch. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, in in a few months. I'm very excited about it. That's and really like, nice. yeah, but it's also like a hectic time where you're like, what next? What's the second year looking like? Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. can people apply now for the next? We haven't huh? opened applications yet. Okay. Uh, we're still, uh, we're still. We're, I think we should open applications by December. Okay. So, what are the people, you know, your fellows right now? What direction do they want to go? One of them, uh, uh, who I personally, I've become friends with, went on to uh, went on to uh, campaign and work uh, on the Karnataka elections. Uh, the other person, uh, uh, the other girl, has applied to uh, Harvard Kennedy School and she got in. And there's another who went, who's doing law at Columbia. 
uh, and somebody else and and somebody else who's go going to Singapore for policy. So I think everyone is taking some people are going for academics and some people That's are nice. working and some people are generally getting into parties and campaigning mm -hmm. and uh, working on ground. Uh, but different things for different people. Nice. So like in a space like this, you know, where you're an author yeah. and you're equally interested in yeah. making a difference mm -hmm. in public policy, where do you see your career trajectory going? I, I feel I can be both. I, can, I feel I can be everything and anything at all awesome. points. And if there are like young girls and young boys looking at it and wondering I can only do one thing, I look at me because Not I'm like, true. I'm just like, I want to do everything. I want to be a journalist. I also want to write books. I also want to write non-fiction and I want to write fiction books. I also want to be... Uh, engaging with politics but I also want to be you know yeah you don't have to stick to one role you know you don't have to ever have a name tag yeah. like your LinkedIn doesn't have to say yeah. I'm an author or I'm an activist it doesn't have to say one yeah. thing which I think is the direction in which careers are going today in any field for that matter I generally think so I think especially with the with the whole uh, freelance culture I yeah. think a lot of people can be a lot of things at the same time yeah. you could be a youtuber a youtuber who does uh, fitness you fitness on one side and also go to go on a day job to have yeah. like a day job so dude it was so great having you here thank today you, thank it was you. so nice to meet you here and you know listen to what yeah. you have to say it was very nice this is like the most awkward part of like any conversation where people are like thank you i'm just like yeah nodding thanks 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 it's great <laughs> but yeah thank you for having me i actually had a lot of fun i'm now yeah. i'm looking awkwardly and nodding yeah yeah <laughs> But awkward looking, I really had a lot of fun. That's great. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Bye-bye.